In this video, I'm gonna give you some guidance on how to consolidate Salesforce flows. Now there's a couple reasons why you might wanna combine different flows into one in Salesforce. The biggest reason is if you're on the professional edition, you're limited to only five flows. So you're gonna hit that limit pretty quickly, but you might be able to extend it a little bit if you can take a few flows and combine them together. The other reason why you might wanna do this is just from an organizational standpoint. When it comes to maintaining your flows, it might make more sense to combine multiple flows into one, just so you can see all the logic in one place, might make it a little bit easier. This is debatable though. Lots of people will have different opinions on when you should create separate flows with separate record triggers and when you should combine them together. It depends. And the big factors there are performance and personal preference. If you wanna combine your flows, here's how I recommend you do it. First step is to go into Salesforce. Of course, go to the list of flows. Then in the upper right-hand corner, click on the Flow Trigger Explorer. This is a great feature that's pretty recent that allows you to look at all of the flows that are triggered by a given object. So here, for example, we have these two flows, one's inactive, one's active, that are fast field updates. Those are before save flows. And then we have four flows here that are after save. Well, the first thing I would do is I take a look at these after save flows and see if I can combine them into one. Two of them stand out to me here. The first one, opportunity dash assign VIP topic. I wanna to take a look at that one. And then opportunity dash update account when closed one. Let's open that one too. The thing to look at here is the triggering logic for the flow. Now we've got two options. We can either take that logic that's triggering these two separate flows and combine them in the same trigger, or we can move that logic into the body of the flow itself. So essentially we could run this flow automatically every time that record is created or updated, but then we have a check to see, does this particular record meet the conditions that I need? And if it does, we might go one direction. If it doesn't, we might go another direction. If it doesn't meet any conditions, then we could just end the flow immediately. It's not quite as efficient as having the conditions in the trigger itself, because we are starting that flow right before we end it, uh, but it's not too bad. And if you really need to save on space, this is an option. So let's take a look at this one, opportunity dash assign VIP topic. If I look here at the entry conditions, we can see that it's whenever the amount is over a million dollars. So if the amount field is over a million dollars, when that opportunity is created or updated, you know, then we're gonna take these other steps here on the left. Let's take a look at our other flow and the triggering conditions for this one. Here, whenever it's created or updated and the stage equals closed one, then we wanna have some action happen. Well, this second flow is simpler. We only have this one element here. So this is the one that I'm ultimately gonna get rid of and I'm gonna just add on to our more complicated flow. And we can see here when the opportunity is closed one that we're gonna update the account type to customer. So let's go back to our more complicated flow here and we've got our trigger conditions. Well, the million dollars works for assigning our VIP topic, but it does not work for our closed one, you know, update the account flow. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. And instead we'll say none. We're just gonna have this run every time this opportunity is created or updated. Now that we don't have any conditions in the trigger, we can add the conditions here beneath it. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is add a decision and we'll say, is the amount over a million dollars? The default outcome, we'll just call that no, and the new outcome, we can say yes. For our resource here, we can scroll down and find the global variable for the record for the opportunity, and now we can find that amount field. And we can say if the amount field is greater than or equal to a million, then we want our flow to go down that yes path. The one thing to pay special attention to here is at the bottom, when to execute this outcome. Now we have two options here. One that says if the condition requirements are met and the other one that says only if the record that triggered the flow to run is updated to meet the condition requirements. What this is saying is if we choose the first one, then we're gonna be running this automation every single time somebody edits an opportunity that's a million bucks or more. We don't need that. We just need it to run once to apply that that special tag, and then that's it. So we wanna choose the second option. So only when it's been updated to be a million dollars is this gonna run. Click done, and now we have these two paths here. If we go down the left path, the yes path, I want these steps to happen. If we go down the right path, I wanna skip those steps. 
So the easiest thing to do here is hit the little plus button, choose connect to element, and then connect right at the end step here. Now we've got a clearly defined path. And what we can do next is add another decision element here. And this other decision element is going to represent the logic in our other flow, where if the stage name equals closed one, we then want to update the account to be customer. So to do that, we'd add another decision element here. We'll say this is called stage is closed one. Our new outcome will be yes, closed one. And then we can again get our global record variable here. We can find our stage pick list and say that this is equal to closed one. Just like that last decision, we don't want this to run every single time. We only want this to run when it is updated to be closed one. Go ahead and customize the default label there and then click done. Now we again have these two paths. So on the left hand side, I will say update records and we'll say update account is the name of this update step. I'm gonna specify the conditions for that related record. So I wanna update the account object whose ID is equal to the account ID that's related to the opportunity that triggered our flow. And then finally, we're gonna update the type from whatever it is now to the value of customer since we have a one opportunity. And now this is what our new updated flow looks like. We've gotten rid of that logic that's in the trigger of the flow. And instead we've replaced it with these decision elements. So this will be a little less efficient, certainly, but it's a way to combine the automation together, which could be pretty valuable. And you can see it evaluates this one first. If it is over a million dollars, it'll go to the left. And then we evaluate our next decision. If the stage is closed one, it'll go to the left. And we're representing you know, both different flows, both sets of logic in just one automation. Next thing to do is click Save As, and I would save it as a new flow, and then give it a better name, since it's now representing you know, both flows, not just one anymore. Let me know if you found this video helpful, or if you have any other questions when it comes to flows or automation within Salesforce. Love to talk to you in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.